Hello and welcome back to Amcode. This course is dedicated for the individuals who are getting started with SQL. This 2 hours of full course will cover all the basic concepts all the way from the RDBMS to the more advanced topics such as subqueries along with the hands-on exercises on each topic. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get the latest videos in the field of data science. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now we will discuss about some introductory part of a SQL where we will discuss introduction to SQL, its applications as well as the different processes which are involved in the SQL, some basic commands. After that we will discuss what really is a table, some SQL constraint, data integrity and some basic syntaxes. So first, let me give you a basic introduction to a SQL. So if you don't know, SQL is a language for operating the databases. So it includes database creation, deletion, fetching the rows and modify them, etc. So SQL is an ANSI standard language. So what is ANSI, which is an acronym for American National Standards Institute. But there are many different versions of a SQL language. So the basic definition of SQL is, it is a structured query language, which is a computer language for storing, manipulating and retrieving the data which is stored in a relational database. So it is a standard language for relational database systems. So all the RDMS like MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, Postgres, Informix or SysBase and also the SQL Server uses the SQL as their standard database language. But why we are using this SQL language? So it is very popular because it allows users to access the data which is stored in a relational database management system. It also allows users to describe the data, define it in a database and manipulate that data. It also allows to embed within other languages using the SQL modules, using the SQL modules libraries and pre-compilers. It also allows users for creating view on top of the tables, which will be very useful when you want to apply security on your data. It also used for creating stored procedures functions in a database. Now let me give you a brief history of a SQL language. So first in 1970s, Dr. Edgar F of IBM, which is known as the father of relational databases. So it describes a relational model of a database and after 1974 it is it was the first time when the structured query language appeared and in 1978 IBM worked to develop Cord's ideas and released a product which names system r and in 1986 IBM developed the first prototype of a relational database and standardized by ANSI. So the first relational database was released by the relational software which later known to be Oracle. So this was just brief history of a SQL. But now let me show you the different processes which are involved in SQL. So these are some applications of SQL. So SQL allows users for accessing the data in which is stored in RDBMS. It allows users describing the data as well as defining and manipulating the data which is stored in the database. It also allows to create and drop the databases and tables. And we can also create views, stored procedures and functions in a database. And at the last it also allows users for setting some permissions on table, procedures and the views for applying some security over the data. So now let me explain you the different processes which are involved in the SQL. So when you are executing a SQL command for any RDBMS, the system determines the best way to carry out your request and the SQL engines figure out the way how to implement the task. So there are various components which are included in this process, which are given here. First one is query dispatcher, next one is a optimization engine, classic query engine and a SQL query engine. We will discuss them in detail along with their functions. So a classic query engine handles all the non SQL queries, but a SQL query engine won't handle the logical files. So the first component is query dispatcher. 
So the function of query dispatcher is to route the query request to either classic query engine or a SQL query engine depending on the attributes of the query. So all the queries are processed by the dispatcher. The next component is optimization engine. So the query optimizer determines the most efficient way to execute a SQL statement after considering many factors including the optimizer goal. And our next components are classic query engine and a SQL query engine. So there are two main query engines which are required to process the queries. So after optimization engine finds the most optimum way to execute the SQL statement. After that, this request is routed to either the classic query engine and SQL query engine to execute that command. So these are the functions of the different components in a SQL process. So now we will discuss the different commands in a SQL. So there are majorly three categories in the SQL commands. First one is a data definition language. Next one is a data manipulation language. And the last one is a data control language. So each of these categories have different set of commands which has some purpose that we will discuss now. Our first category is data definition language or a DDL. So the data definition or a data description language is a syntax for creating and modifying the database objects such as tables, indices and users. So DDL statements are similar to a computer programming language for defining the data structures, especially the database schemas. So there are mainly three major type of DDL commands that are given here. First one is create, which creates a new table, a view of a table or other objects in a database. The next one is alter, which modifies an existing database object such as table, view or any other object. And the last one is drop, which deletes an entire table a view of a table or other objects which are present in the database. Our next category is data manipulation language or a DML. So a data manipulation language is a computer programming language which is used for adding, deleting and modifying the existing data which is stored in a database. So there are majorly four DML commands that we are going to use more often in a SQL. The first one is select which is used for retrieving certain records from one or more tables. The next one is a insert command. So as the name suggests, it is used for creating a record. The next one is a update, which modifies the record. And last one is delete, which deletes or erases the record. And the last category is DCL, which is data control language. So a data control language is a syntax, which is similar to a programming language which is used for control access to data which is stored in a database, which is used for authorization purpose and securing the data. So there are majorly two DCL commands which we will use more often. The first one is a grant, which gives the privilege to a certain user to use the data which is stored in a database. And next one is a revoke, which takes back the privileges which is granted to the user. So, so far we have covered what is a structured query language, its basic definition, its brief history, applications of a SQL. We have also covered different processes which are involved in the SQL and we have seen how the different commands are categorized in SQL. Now we will take a deep dive into a SQL by examining the different syntaxes of each commands. Let me show you how. But first you should know what is a table in a database. So the data in RDBMS is stored in a database object which is called as tables. So this table is basically a collection of related data entries and it consists of numerous columns and rows. So it clearly means it is a structured type of data. So a table is the most common and simplest form of data storage in a relational database. So here you can see the example of an employees table having the six columns and you can see there are five entries present in this table. So every table is broken into the smaller entities which are called as fields. So the fields in this employees table are id num, lname, 
एफ नेम जॉब कोड सैलरी एंड फोन सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट फील्ड्स प्रेजेंट इन द एम्प्लॉयज टेबल सो ए फील्ड इज कॉलम इन अ टेबल विच इज डिजाइन टू मेंटेन स्पेसिफिक इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट एवरी रिकॉर्ड विच इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस टेबल सो इट क्लियरली मीन्स दिस आई डी नम रिप्रेजेंट्स द एम्प्लॉयज आई डी एल नेम रिप्रेजेंट्स द लास्ट नेम एफ नेम स्टोर्स द फर्स्ट नेम एंड सो ऑन द नेक्स्ट वन इज रेकॉर्ड और ए रो सो अ रेकॉर्ड इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ए रो ऑफ डेटा विच इज ए इंडिविजुअल एंट्री विच एग्जिस्ट इन अ टेबल सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल हियर यू कैन सी देर आर फाइव रेकॉर्ड्स और इंडिविजुअल एंट्रीज आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस एम्प्लॉयज टेबल द नेक्स्ट वन इज ए कॉलम सो अ कॉलम इज ए वर्टिकल एंटिटी इन अ टेबल विच कंटेन्स ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन associated with a specific field in a table if you take the example of a f name which is first name so this all column represent the first name of employees which have five entries so these are all the basic concept of a table which is stored in a database so now we will discuss about different data types which are present in the sql but let me tell you what really is a data type so a sql data type is an attribute that specifies the type of data of an object so each column variable and expression has a related data type in sql we can choose a data type for a table while creating it based on the columns as per our requirement so mainly there are six categories of data types that i have listed here the first one is exact numeric data types so it contains different numeric types such as big int int which is integer small int tiny int bit decimal numeric and so on the next category is approximate numeric data types which are nothing but float and real so what is float that you are already aware if you are working with other programming languages the another one is date and time data types so it contains the data types such as date time small date time date and time you will get more clear idea about these data types while we create our tables and insert the data in it our next category is character string data type which contains the char where char where char max and text which is used for combining the character as well as variable these other three categories are not often used which are unicode character string data types the binary data types and some miscellaneous data types that we are going to discuss in our further sessions that was all about different data types but now we will discuss about different operators that we can use in sql so when we hear operators the one thing that that will come into our mind that the mathematical operations that we usually do in our day to day basis but in sql an operator is a reserved word or a character which is primarily used in the where clause of a sql statements to perform different operations such as comparisons and arithmetic operations so these operators are used for specifying the conditions in a sql query and to serve as a conjunction for multiple conditions in a single statement so it majorly has four types such as arithmetic operators comparison operators logical operators and the operators which are used for negating the conditions this type of operators are used for performing different operations on our data so let me explain you all of these types one by one our first category is sql arithmetic operators so the arithmetic operators are used for performing different arithmetic operations in the sql statement so i hope you are already familiar with all these operators from your childhood such as addition subtraction multiplication division and modulus our next category is sql comparison operators so these operators are used for performing different comparison operations on our sql data the first one is equal to sign which is used for checking if the two operands are equal or not if they are equal then the condition will become true the next one is not equal to operator which is represented as exclamation mark followed by the equal to sign so this operator will check if the values of two operands are equal or not but in this case if the value are not equal then this condition will become true our next operator is works as similar 
as the not equal to operator the only difference is it is represented by less than sign followed by the greater than sign our next operator is greater than sign which checks if the value of left operand is greater than the value of right operand if it is yes then the condition will become true less than operator so if the values of left operand is less than the value of right operand then the condition will become true and the remaining two operators works similar but the only difference is the greater than or equal to operator checks if the value of left operand is greater than or equal to the right operand and the less than or equal to will check if the value of left operand is less than or equal to the right operand so these operators can be used for performing different comparison operations so now our last category is sql logical operators so we can perform different logical operations by using these operators so we will discuss them one by one so the all the logical operators which are available in sql that i have listed here with their description the first one is all operator so this all operator is used for comparing a value to all the values in another data set the second one is and operator so this operator allows the existence of multiple condition in a where clause of a sql statement so what is a where clause that we are going to discuss in our next topic third one is a any operator the any operator is used for comparing a value to any application value in the list as per the condition the between operator is used for searching for values that are within a set of values if you want to find the values between 10 and 20 then you can use this between operator to get all the values between 10 and 20 next one is a exist operator which is used for searching for the presence of row in a specified table that meets a certain criteria so we will provide some criteria so that we can search for the row which are present in a specified table the next one is a in operator the in operator is used to compare a value to a list of different values that we have specified and we require the like operator uses different wild card operators for searching some specific patterns to find some similar values in our data set next one is a not operator the not operator reverses the meaning of logical operator which we will use such as we can use it with exist between or in operator to negate these operators next one is a or operator so i hope you know the difference between and and or operator so it will combine different conditions in a sql statement so that if one condition will true our sql statement will execute the next one is a is null operator so this operator is used to compare the values with null values so what is null value that we are going to see in our upcoming topics and the last one is a unique operator so this unique operator searches every row for a specified table for uniqueness so that no duplicates will present for a specified table so this was all about different operators present in a sql and how we can use that to perform different arithmetic or comparison operations so in the next topic we will be taking a deep dive into sql and we will start experimenting and learning different commands in a sql now we will discuss about different databases that we can start work with so there are so many popular rdbms which are available right now which are listed here the first one is mysql so the mysql is an open source sql database which is developed by a swedish company called as mysql ab so this mysql is supporting many different platforms including microsoft windows unix as well as mac os it also has free and paid versions depending upon the usage and the features so mysql comes with a very fast multi-threaded multi-user and robust sql database server so it has many advantages such as high performance higher availability scalability and flexibility to run any commands as well as it has lowest total cost of ownership our next database is ms sql server 
So this MS SQL Server is a relational database management system or you can say RDBMS which is developed by Microsoft. So it primarily has two query languages. The first one is T-SQL and second one is a NC-SQL and it also has higher performance as well as higher availability. Our next database is Oracle. So it is widely popular and very large multi-user database management system. So it is a RDBMS which is developed by the Oracle Corporation. So Oracle works to efficiently manage its resources, a database of information among the multiple clients requesting and sending the data in network. So it has excellent database server choice for server computing. So it supports all major platforms such as MS-DOS, Netware, Unixware and most Unix flavors. So it has some different features such as read consistency, portability, also it has data warehousing, materialized views, table compression as well as partitioning when we are dealing with large data sets and data mining. So these are the different features which you can get if you are using Oracle. So now if you want to get a deep dive into SQL, we need to install some database software to start running our SQL commands. So now I will show you how to download and install Oracle 11G which is a open source free software which you can get from Oracle website and you can get started your SQL journey. So to do that you have to just type download Oracle 11G which is a free software which you can get from the Oracle website. So just select the first option and here you have to select the Oracle 11G Express Edition for Windows as I am using the Windows but if you are using the Linux or Mac OS then you have to select this second option. So just select it. After selecting it will get many options according to your bit. So here I am using 64 bit OS. So I will click here and after that you have to just review it to accept the Oracle license agreement and just click on download. And as you can see you can save your file here and this will take a while as it is a 317 MB software. So just click OK. So now it is started downloading. So after completing the download, just click on the open file and just extract this to your drive. So after extracting, here you can see this is the setup file to install Oracle 11G software. So just click on setup. After that, it will start its extraction process. So it will take a while. After that, just click on next accept the license agreement next and the option is already selected which is oracle database 11g express edition express edition is a free software so click on next and click on yes so you have to give password for the database which is a system database so just enter the password so give any password that you can easily remember after that just click next and install so that's it. We have successfully installed our Oracle 11G software. So to launch the SQL command line, just type SQL. And here we can see run SQL command line. So hit enter as you can see. So now you can run your commands from this SQL command line. So we have successfully installed the Oracle 11G Express Edition so that you can start practicing your SQL commands. But you can also download and practice different database which is available such as MySQL or MS SQL Server as you wish. Just you have to remember one thing clearly that there may be a slight syntax differences that you need to note down while you are using different database. So now we will start our SQL journey by creating the database. So I hope you know what is a database. So now we will create one database. So the SQL create database statement is used for creating a new SQL database. For creating the database, here is the syntax. You have to just type create database and give the database name. And every command ends with a semicolon. So here for example, we have created database called AMP code from our SQL command line. So let me show you how to do that. So this is our command line. So here I am using MySQL RDBMS. So for creating the database, you just have to give create database and after that you have to give the database name, AMP code. Every SQL query will end with a semicolon. So after giving semicolon and hit enter, as you can see, we have successfully created our database. 
So, but first you have to make sure that you have admin privileges before creating any database. So once the database is created, we can check the list of databases by running this show databases command. So let me execute this command. So for accessing all the database name, just use the command show databases. As you can see, here are the number of databases. And here you can see this AMP code database that we have just created. So this is how you can create the database and validate it by using the show databases command. So as we have already created our database, now we will discuss how to delete the database from the SQL schema. So we use a SQL drop database statement for dropping or deleting an existing database in a SQL schema. Let me show you with some example. So here you can see all the database which are present in our SQL schema. So to drop the database, you have to just give drop database. So as we have already created one database named M code, we will drop it just to give M code. As you can see, our database has been cleared. Extract the list of databases by using the show databases statement. After hitting enter, as you can see, the M code database has been deleted from our schema. But you have to remember one thing clearly. You have to be more careful before using this operation because deleting an existing database would delete all the information which is stored in that database. So it will delete all the tables and the rows which are present in that database. And also you have to make sure that you have admin privileges before dropping any database. So now our next topic is use statement which is used for selecting the database. So when we have multiple databases in our schema, so before starting any operation, we have to select a database where all the operations can be performed. So the SQL use statement is used for selecting any existing database in a SQL schema. So the syntax is given here. We have to just give use and the database name. That's it. Let me show you how to do that. So here is the list of databases that are present in our schema. So if you want to use the MySQL database, just you have to give use and the database name, which is MySQL. As you can see here, the database has been changed. So after this operation, you can work inside this database and run your commands. So as of now, we have seen how to create a database, how to drop it and how to use it along with their syntaxes. So now we will create our first table by using the create statement. So for creating a simple table, it involves three major inputs. First one is a table name. The second one are the columns which you want in your table. And the last one is the data type for the specified columns. So the SQL create table statement is used for creating a new table. So here is the syntax for creating the new table. We just have to type create table, give the table name and in brackets we have to provide column name and the data type for each of the specified columns. So these are the major inputs you need to give to create a table. And also if you want to assign any constraint to the table, we can do that as given here. So in this case, we have used primary key, but what really is a primary key we will discuss in our upcoming topics. So just don't bother about that. Just focus on the create table statement. Let me show you with some example. So for this example, we will be creating our first table employees in which there will be five columns. The first one is employee ID or a EMP ID, the name, age, address and salary along with their data types. So for creating the table, we have to use the create table statement. So just type create table and after that give the table name. So in this case, we will give like employees and now in bracket, you have to provide the column name along with their data types. So just hit enter and on each line, just specify your column names that you require. So the first name is EMP ID, which is employee ID. And after that, you have to give the data type. So what are data types and the different data types in SQL that we have already discussed in our previous topics. For employee ID, usually it's an integer number. So we will give like as an integer. And you have to separate this by using the commas. On the next line, the next column, which is name which has the data type varchar. So varchar 
which is nothing but a combination of variable and a character and in bracket we will give the length so in this case we will give like 20 the next one is age which again will be the integer number another one is a address the varchar of data type but in this case we will provide the length 30 and the last one is salary which is nothing but an integer value so we will give int and after that just close the bracket and give semicolon to end our command as you can see our table has been created so we can verify if our table has been created or not by using one command so it is very important command that you need to keep in your mind that is desc or describe command for using the describe command just use like desc and give the table name which is employees so semicolon and enter so as you can see desc command that will give you the description of a table which contains all the metadata of a table having the fields which are nothing but the columns we have given in the table while creating it the type which is nothing but the data type of each column and it will also columns will represent the different constraint or a keys which we have assigned to the specific columns in our table so in this case we haven't used any constraint or keys to it so it is not showing anything so this is how you can verify if your table has been created successfully or not or you can use this command to get the clear idea about the metadata of a table so congratulations we have successfully created our first table so if you want the list of all the tables which are created in your database you can do that by using statement which is show tables so semicolon and enter as you can see this is the list of the table which contains in our database so currently we are using the test database that I have created only for this tutorial. So this is our first table which we have just created. So this is how you can create new tables in your database. Our next topic is SQL drop table statement. So this drop table statement is used to remove a table definition and all the data or we can say rows which are present in that table. It will also remove all the indexes, triggers, constraint and different permissions that we have allotted to our specific table but you have to be very careful while using this command because once a table is deleted then all the information which will be available in it will also be lost forever so just keep in mind that before dropping any table just make sure that the table doesn't have any important data that you will need in future so the syntax is pretty straightforward you just have to type drop table and give the table name let me show you how to drop a table so here as you can see the employees table is present in our test database that we have just created so if you want to drop the table you just have to type drop table and give the table name which is employees as you can see so if we use describe command or we can use show tables to verify if the table is dropped successfully or not so first let me show you describe command after hitting enter as you can see the table test.employees doesn't exist so this test.employees is nothing but the database dot table name so test is our database and employees is our table also if you use the show tables command as you can see it is showing empty set as our database now doesn't have any table so this way we can completely erase the whole structure of any table and the data present in it by using the drop table command so as of now we have seen how to create a table and how to drop it but now we will see how to insert the records in a table which is present in our database insert into statement is used for adding new rows or records of data to a table which is present in our database so for this there are mainly two basic syntaxes which I have given here so for the first syntax if you want to insert the data into specified columns you can do that by specifying the table name the column names and their values so here is the syntax you just have to give insert into then the table name and give all the columns that you want to populate and after that you have to give values and in bracket you have to provide all the values in order similar to the order of the columns that you have defined here and for second syntax you may need not to specify the column names in SQL if you're adding values for all the columns of the table so but you have to remember 
the order of the values should have same order as the columns in the table while creating the table. So here is the second syntax we use if you want to insert the values in all the tables but the order of these values should be equal to the order of the columns when we have created our table. So here is one example that I have given. So here we are inserting the record into employees table and here are the specified columns such as ID, name, age, address and salary and we are inserting the values as per the data type that we have allotted for these columns and the order of the values let me show you with some example. So this is our SQL command line and in the previous topic we have created one table named employees. Let me show you its metadata. So for this just use the describe command to get the metadata of the table. As you can see here are the fields. So first one is employee ID, name, age, address and salary. So these are all the columns which are present in our employees table. And here are the data types that we have allotted. So for this example inserting the data into all of our columns for that you just have to give like insert into and after that just give the table name so the table name is employees and after that you have to type values and in bracket you have to give the values in a specific order which is similar to the order of this column so the first one is employee id and the data type is integer so type the employee id here will give one zero zero and the value should be separated by comma. The second value is name. Name should be in the inverted commas. John. Again the third value is age. The fourth is address. And the last field is salary. And the data type is integer. And just close the bracket semicolon and enter. As you can see we have successfully inserted the data into our table. So we have successfully created one record into our employees table. So this is how you can insert the data into our table. So let me insert some more values. So similarly you can add billions of rows into your table by using this insert into statement. So here I have inserted 5 records into our employees table. But you might ask how we can verify it. I mean we have inserted the data but how we can retrieve the same. So for that the data retrieval statement which is a select statement that we are going to discuss in our upcoming topic. So just bear with me. I hope you understood how to insert the records by using this simple insert into statement. So just for practice let me give you one exercise. So in this exercise you have to create one table called customer and you have to insert five columns into it namely customer id, name, address, email and phone number and also insert 10 records into it. So this is your exercise for this topic. Our next topic is populating the data from one table to the another. So we can populate the data into a table through the select statement over the existing table. So we can do that by using the select statement that I have given here. So we just have to mention insert into statement. Then we have to give the table in which you want to insert the data and in bracket you have to give the columns in which the data has to be inserted and after that you have to use the select statement and specify the columns from the second table from which you want to insert the data. But you have to remember one thing clearly the number of columns into target table should be same as the source table. So the source table and the data type of those columns should be similar otherwise it will throw an error and will not be able to insert the data. Let me show you how you can do that. So for this example I have created one table named employees underscore new which has only three columns. First one is employee id, second one is name and last one is the address. So if you want to insert the data from the existing table which is employees into this new table which is employees new we can do that by using the select step. For that we just have to give like insert into and the target table. The target table will be employees new and in bracket just give the columns. So in this case we will give like employee ID, name, address, bracket complete and after that you have to give the select statement. So we are selecting the columns. So as you already know that our source table has 5 columns but in this case you can insert only 3 of them which are already present in our source table. So just give like employee id, name and address. On the next line from and here you have to give the source table which is employees. So as you can see here the results 5 rows affected 
as all the five rows which are present in our employees table has been inserted into our newly created table which is employees underscore new. This is how you can load the data from one table to the another by using this select statement. So our next topic is the select query or a select statement. So the select statement is used for fetching or retrieving the data from a database table which returns this data in the form of a result table or a output table. So these result tables are called as a result sets. So we have already dealt with the describe command in which you are getting the metadata of whole table which is represented in a tabular form. So this is also one type of a result table or a result set. So for retrieving the data, here are the two syntaxes for it, for retrieving the data from a database table. So in the first scenario, if you want to retrieve some specific columns from the table, you have to, you have to give like select the column names which are separated by commas from and the table name. And if you want to retrieve all the columns in a table, you just simply have to give select star from and table name. So star represents all the columns present in the table. Let me show you how we can do that. So as you can see here, we have successfully inserted five records in our employees table. And we have also loaded the same data into the employees new table, which we have inserted by using the select statement. So for retrieving the data, you just have to give select and now if you want to retrieve all the columns you just have to give like star which represents all and give the from keyword from and the table name so our table name is employees semicolon and enter as you can see this is our result table or you can say result set which is just a output of our query so this is our query which retrieves all the columns from employees table here are the rows which we have inserted by using the insert into statement. So this is employee ID, name, age, address and salary. So these are all the columns and these are all the rows. But if you want to retrieve some specific columns, we can do that by using select and give the column names separated by commas. So if you want to retrieve employee ID, employee name and salary from the employees table, we can do that by specifying those columns such as employee ID, name and salary and give from keyword and give the table name which is employees semicolon and enter as you can see we are retrieving only employee ID, name and salary from the employees table so this is how you can retrieve the data from any table stored in a database now we are going to discuss one of the most crucial topics in SQL which is a WHERE clause so what do you mean by WHERE clause so the SQL WHERE clause is used for specifying some conditions while we retrieve the data from single table or if we are joining multiple tables from the database so how we can join the tables that will be our upcoming topic but let me tell you how we can apply some conditions on one table so if the given condition is satisfied then only it returns the specific values from the table. So you should use where clause to filter the records and fetching only the necessary records you want. So let's consider, for example, if you have one table named students and it contains about hundreds of records, but if you want the name of the students who, who scored A grade into their examination, you can use the where clause for applying the condition on the grade column that you have created to store the grades of the students. We can simply give the condition that the grade should equal to the A. So you can not only use this WHERE clause in the SELECT statement, but it can also use in the UPDATE and DELETE statements, which we will examine in our subsequent chapters. So for using the WHERE clause, this is the basic syntax. So here we have used the WHERE clause in the SELECT statement while retrieving the data. So the SELECT statement, after that the column names that you want to retrieve and the table name from which you want to fetch the data. And here after from and the table name, you have to give your where condition. So here is some example. So here we are selecting the ID, name and salary column from the employees table. And we have used where condition on the salary columns where the salary should greater than 2000. So this query should return all the employees whose salary is greater than 2000. So this is very simple example. Let me show you how we can execute that. So for this example, we will use already created table employees. Let me show you its description or you can say metadata. So describe employees. So here you can see we have employee ID, name, age 
address and salary columns having different data types as given in this table. And let me show you the data which is present in this table. So we'll use the select statement. So just select star from employees. So here you can see it contains five records, but if you want employee ID, name and address of the employees whose age is greater than 30, we will use the select statement for retrieving the data. After that, we will give the columns. So in this case, we will fetch employee ID, name and address from table name, which is employees. And after that, we will use the where clause. In this case, we want the records of employees having the age greater than 30. So here we will apply like where the column name, which is age greater than and 30. As it is an integer, you don't need to specify it in the single or double quotes. Hit enter as you can see here in the result table. We're getting three rows, which has employee ID, name and address columns whose age is greater than 30. So here you can see in our data, there are only three entries 101, 103 and 104 that we are getting as a result by using the where clause. So this is how you can use the where clause for filter out the data from either one table or if you're joining two or more tables. So how to join the tables that we'll see in our subsequent lectures. Now let's go to our next topic. So let's consider if you want all the details of specific employee, you can do that by using the where clause again. So if you want all the details of John, you can do that by applying where clause to the name column. For this, just do select star as we're retrieving all the data from employees where the name should equal to and in the quotes John. So we are giving the quotes as it has the string data type. As you can see, we are getting all the details such as employee ID, name, age, address and salary for John as we have applied where condition on the name column. And we have used assignment operator to assign the value for some specific field in the table. But in these two examples, we have only used one condition that you want to apply one or more condition, we can do that by using AND and OR operator. So that will be our next topic. So now we will discuss about AND and OR operators in SQL. So you might have heard these operators in all the programming languages such as C, C++, Java. These operators are very useful for applying some specific conditions in our logic. So similarly in SQL, AND and OR operators are used for combining multiple conditions to filter out our data from the SQL statement. So these two operators are also called as conjunctive operators. So this will provide a means to make multiple comparisons with different operators in the same SQL statement. So we can apply multiple conditions and combine them to further filter out our content. If you're dealing with huge amount of data, these operators will work as a charm as they will allow you to apply many conditions for each of the columns as per your requirement. So first, let us talk about this AND operator. So AND operator allows us the existence of multiple conditions in the SQL statement, especially in the WHERE clause. So we usually use this operator in the WHERE clause. So if we give the two conditions in the WHERE clause by combining the AND operator and as we are using the AND operator, in this case, both conditions should be true for retrieving the data from a table. So for example, we are selecting ID, name and salary column from the employees table and we are applying two conditions and we are combining them by using the AND operator. So here the first condition is salary should be greater than 2000 and age should be less than 25. So if the both conditions will get true, only those records will get fetched into the result table. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So for this example, we will again continue with our employees table as it is very simple in structure and it also contains less data for your better understanding. So in this case, we will be applying two conditions in our where clause. So if both the condition will satisfy only those record will get fetched into our result table. So for this, let's consider if you want the employee ID and name and address of the employees whose age is less than 45 and it has the salary greater than 20,000. So for this, just use the select clause. We will be fetching employee ID, name and address from the employees table and we'll use where clause here. And now we have to give two condition which are separated by and operator. So our first condition is 
age should be less than 45 and next condition should be separated by and salary should be greater than 20,000 and hit enter as you can see here we are getting two records which satisfies both the conditions until this we should be getting four records only this guy has the age which is greater than 45 but we have applied another filter for salary so as only two peoples have salary greater than 20,000 so we are seeing only two records here as we have used and operate but if we want to satisfy either condition we can use another operator that will be our next topic so our next operator is or operator so or operator is used for combining multiple condition in the where clause of a sql statement but here either of the condition should be true for fetching out the records so here we are fetching id name and salary column from the employees table and we are combining two conditions first one is salary is greater than 2000 and age should be less than 25 and we are separating those by using org operator so if either of the condition will get true that record will get populated in our result table let us discuss this with some simple example so for this example I think you will get better understanding if you use this same example but instead of AND operator we will be using OR operator. To get to know the difference, to get to you to know the difference between these two operators and why we are using them in either of these conditions. So for this we will be selecting same columns which are employee id, name and address from the employees table and we will be using same conditions in our WHERE clause as well. The two condition will be first one is age is less than 45 and the second condition is the salary should be greater than 2000. But here instead of using AND operator we will be using OR operator here. So now here the employees whose age is 45 or its salary should be greater than 20,000. So if either of this condition is true the record will be displayed in our result table. See this by hitting enter. So as you can see we are getting all the records as each of these records are either following one condition or they are following two conditions. We have used same example but let's see the difference. Here we are only getting two results because it satisfies both the conditions but here we are getting all the results as these all records are specifying any one of these conditions or both the conditions which are given in our where clause. So this is how you can use the where clause for filtering out the data and you can use multiple conditions by incorporating AND and OR operators. So I want you to practice this where clause as it is very crucial for our upcoming topics. So I hope you have completed our previous exercises and I hope you have created the table and have some data in it. So now just practice the where clause on your table and apply some conditions. So either it will be one condition or multiple conditions to get the better understanding of how this where clause is working. Now we will be discussing about how we can update the existing records in our table. So update query is used for modifying existing records in a table. So we can also use where clause with update query to update some selected rows and apply some condition to it. So here is the syntax for update statement. So we have to give update again the table name and again set and here you have to give your modifications that you need to do in your records. So here you have to specify the column names and the updated values and we can make one or more than one changes to your records and also we can apply some where condition to it to further narrow down the searches. But you have to remember one thing you should use the where clause with update statement to update some selected rows and ap apply some filter to it otherwise all the rows would, would be affected. So let's consider if you have students table which contains four columns mainly student id, student name, class and grade and it has 10 records and it has 10 records according to their student IDs. If you want to update the grades for the student whose student ID is 6, then you have to put some where condition to it. If you didn't put any where condition, all the values contains in the grade will be changed for all the student IDs. So to understand more, let me show you with some example. So let's consider, we have our already created table employees. But if you want to update the salary for this 102 employee ID, so if you want to update this record, we can apply some where condition to our update statement. So to modify it, we will be updating the value for salary 
from 35,000 to 50,000. Let me show you how we can do that. So just you have to give update statement. So update then the table name which is employees then from then you have to give set and after that you have to give your modifications by specifying the column names and the updated value for it. So we will be changing the salary. So just we have to give salary and then assigning some updated value to it. We will be changing the value from 35,000 to 50,000 and on the next line we have to give the where clause. But if we end this statement as it is all the values contains in the salary column will be changed to 50,000. So just do some where condition where the amp id equal to 102. So when you execute this command it will change the salary to 50,000 whose employee id is 102. So this is the record. So after hitting enter as you can see it is showing as one row is affected as we have applied where condition to the specific row. Now if we select all the records from the employees table as you can see the salary of an employee whose employee id is 102 has been changed from 35,000 to the newer value which is 50,000. So this is how you can update the values in your table but if you didn't use the where condition then it will affect all the rows in your table. So for this let's consider we have one table which is employees backup. So we have created the duplicate table for our employees table. So just we'll select all the datas from employees underscore bkp which is which is nothing but a duplicate table that we have created as a backup for our employees table. But let's consider if you want to change the address for all the rows we can do that by using this update statement. So we will give like update table name which is employees backup employees underscore bkp. We have to set our new value for our address column. So we will set address equals to India. So when we execute the command as you can see four rows are affected. So if we select the data from this backup table as you can see all the values for address column has been changed to India as we didn't apply any filter. So I hope you got clear idea how we are dealing with update statement here. So just now we have talked about how to update the existing rows into our table. So let's discuss about how we can delete the existing rows from our SQL table. So the delete query is used for deleting existing records in a table. We can use a where clause with a delete query for applying specific condition to our delete query and further narrow down our deletion process. So here is the syntax which is very simple one. Just we have to give delete from and after from it expects some table name. So just give table name and we have to give the where condition. But you have to remember one thing very clearly. This syntax is very similar to the update statement. So if you didn't use any where clause all the rows will be deleted from our table. So you have to make sure that if you want to delete the specific record you have to specify that condition into your where clause otherwise whole the data will be deleted from your table. So this is one important note. So for example let's consider we have a customer table and we want to delete the record whose customer name is John. So we can do that by using this delete statement. So we just have to specify delete from the table name after that we have to give the where condition where the customer name equals to John. It is very simple. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So for this example let's consider our employees table. So just select all the data from it. So as you can see it contains five records but if you want to delete one specific record so let's consider if you want to delete this fourth record we can do that by using the delete statement and specifying the condition into our where clause. We can do it multiple ways. So for this just use delete from and table name which is employees and on the next line. So as you can see the employee id will be the column which contains all the unique records as the employee id should not be duplicated ideally. So for this example we will be using employee id as a filter. So if you want to delete this third record we will give the condition like where employee id equals to 102. So this record will be deleted. So after it enter as you can see the query has been succeeded and one row is affected. So it is clearly showing that 
one row has been deleted from our table. So when we try to select all the data from our employees table, as you can see, we are only getting four records now as the records whose employee ID is 102 has been deleted. It is so simple. But if you didn't give any where clause, it will delete all the records from your table. So let's consider we have one backup table that we have already discussed in our previous topic. So we have one backup table, let's consider select, which is employees backup. So just select the data from it. So as you can see, it is the backup table for our employees table. But now I don't want any records from this table, but I will use it in the future. So I don't want to drop the table as if we drop the table, it will also delete all the metadata and structure of the table. But if you want to empty your table, you can just simply use the delete statement here. So just use delete from and the table name which is employees backup. So this statement will delete all the records from your table but the table structure will remain and I can use that table in future and insert the data in. So after it enter as you can see five rows are affected so it clearly says that all the rows should be deleted from this table. So if we will try to select the data from it as you can see empty set is showing as this table contains no data, but we can use this table in the future as the table is still there in our database with no data. Now let us discuss about like clause in SQL. So the like clause is used for comparing a value to the similar values using some wildcard operators. So wildcard operators are nothing but the operators which we are used to match some specific patterns within our data sets. So there are majorly two wildcard which are used in the like clause. First one is a percent sign and next one is a underscore. So the percent sign represents 0, 1 or multiple characters whereas the underscore represents a single number of character and this can be used in a combination as per your requirement. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So for this example we will be using the wildcard operators on our employees table. Let me show you its data. So as you can see there are four rows present in our employees table. But for first example, if we want to fetch the record whose salary starts with 20, we can do that. For that, we have to use the percent sign as it represents one, two or more characters. So for this, we have to use like statement in our where clause. So just select star from from the table name, which is employees where and we have to give the column name. So here we are using the wildcard operator on the salary column. So where the salary. So for this condition, we need to fetch the records whose salary starts with 20. So we will give like, like and inside quotations, we will give 20 and the percent sign. So this will fetch the records whose salary starts with 20. Let us run this query. So as you can see, we are getting the employee details whose salary starts with 20. But for next example, let us fetch the record whose salary ends with 5000. To do that, just simply use select star from employees where the salary like and in double quotes, if you want the records whose salary ends with 5000, then you need to give the percent sign and after that you have to give 5000. So this will fetch the records whose salary will end with 5000. So when we hit enter, as you can see, we're getting the result whose salary ends with 5000. It is so simple. So if you want to match any value from its starting, you have to give that value before the percent sign as we have given in the first example and vice versa. If you want to fetch the records whose specific value ends with some letters or characters, you have to give that after the percent sign. But this is all about percent sign. Let us discuss about underscore. So for this example, we will fetch the records who has name having a letter in the second position. To do that, just give select star from employees where the name like and in quotes, we have to give underscore for one letter. So now if you want to fetch the records whose name having a letter in the second position, we can do that. We just have to use the underscore for first letter and the second letter will be a and for remaining letter, you have to give the percent sign. So this will fetch the records whose name have the a letter in the second position and for remaining letters, we have given the percent sign. After we run the query, as you can see here, we are getting the records whose name has a letter in the second position, as you can see here. So this is how 
you can use the wildcard operators to fetch the specific pattern from your database. So I will recommend you to practice this more by using this wildcard operator in the combination or separately. So let's move on to the next topic now. Now we will discuss about top clause or we can say limit as well as row num clause in SQL. So this limit clause is used for fetching the top n number of records from the table. But then why we have given this limit or row num in the title? So all the database do not support the top clause. So for example, MySQL supports the limit clause as well as the Oracle supports the row num command. But the functionality is same. If you want to fetch the top n number of records, we will run this query. But you might ask why we need to fetch only the top number of records. So the answer will be if your table contains billions of records and you just want to see how the records looks like for analyzing it. To do that, if you just use select star from and the table name, it will take huge amount of time to fetch those billion number of records. But if you want to know the structure of the records, then you can do that by simply using this top limit or row num clause. It totally depends on the database that you are using. So this way you can quickly fetch the records and get to know how the records are inserted in any of the table. So this is the syntax for top clause. You have to use it in the select clause. So just give select top and the number of percentage that you want to fetch from your table and from and give the table name. For limit clause, you have to give it after the table name. So just select star from table and again give the limit and the n represents the number of records that you want to fetch. And lastly, the row num clause, you have to use it in the where clause. So just select star from table name where the row num and you can use assignment operator or any of them. You can also use the less than, greater than instead of equal to sign. It totally depends on you. So now let us discuss this with some simple example. For this example, let's consider we have table named employees which contains 4 or 5 billion records and you just quickly want to know how the structure of the records which are inserted into our table. But I am kidding here, our employees table will have only 4 records in it but let's consider for this example. If you are dealing with huge amount of data, we can use the top clause, row num clause or the limit clause, whatever it is, it totally depends on the RDBMS. So as you can see, we are using the MySQL. So here the top clause will be applicable for this functionality. To do that, just give like select star from the table name which is employees and now you have to give the limit and n will represent the number of record that you want to fetch quickly. So we will give 2. So this query will return top 2 records which are inserted into our employees table. So after hitting enter, as you can see, we are getting the 2 records. It's very simple. So this way you can get to know how the data is inserted into the table and their structure. As if you use the describe command, it will only give us the information about columns and the data types. So this is all about the top clause in SQL. So now we will discuss about the order by clause. I think it doesn't need any introduction. The order by clause is used for sorting out the data in either ascending or descending order based on one or more columns. So if you want to fetch the records whose employee ID should be in the ascending order, you can do that by simply using the order by clause which is based on the employee ID column. So here is the syntax for it. Just give select the columns that you want to fetch from the table name and you can give the where condition if you want. And after the where condition, you have to give the order by and the column name which contains one or more column. And let me tell you one thing, by default, if you didn't give ASC or DESC which is which represents the ascending or descending order, by default it will take it as a ascending for most of the databases. But if you want the order in the descending order, you have to give the DESC after the column name. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So here, this is our employees table, but if you want the records in which the age should be in the ascending order, you have to use the order by clause. So for it, just we have to give select star from the table name order by and the column name by which you want the ascending or descending order. So in this example, we will use age. So this is the statement. I haven't give the ASC for ascending because if you didn't give anything by default, it will get you the result in the ascending order. After hitting enter, 
as you can see we are getting the results whose age is in ascending order but let's consider if you want the age in the descending order you can give that by simply giving the desc after the column name so just give desc hit enter as you can see and now we are getting the age in the descending order we can run this command on any other columns which are present in your table so let's consider we will fetch the records whose salary is in ascending order to do that just simply give the select star from employees order by and instead of age we will give like salary here this is the result and now the salary is in ascending order and similarly we can do that vice versa by applying just desc after the column name to get the values in the descending order we are getting the salary column in the descending order this is very simple now let us discuss about sql constraints so you might ask what really are constraints so constraints are nothing but the rules which we enforce on the data columns of a table which is stored in our database so these are used for limiting the type of data that can go into the table so this will ensure the reliability and accuracy of the data which we will store in our database so they can either be the column level or a table level so the column level constraint are applied only to one or more column whereas the table level constraint are applied to the whole table in our database so these are some following types of most commonly used constraints available in sql so the first one is a not null constraint which ensures that a column cannot have the null values so what really are null values that we will discuss in a bit the second one is a default constraint which will provide some default value for a column when none of them is specified when inserting the data next one is a unique constraint which ensures all the values are different in that particular column next one is a primary key which uniquely identifies each row or we can say record in a database table next one is a foreign key which uniquely identifies row or record in any of the given database tables the check constraint will ensure that all the values in a column satisfies some certain condition that we will pass during creation of the table or modifying the table that we will discuss during that topic and last one is the index which used to create and retrieve the data from databases very quickly and efficiently but now let us discuss about all types of constraints in detail so the constraint can be specified when a table is created using the create table statement or we can use the alter table command to create the constraint even after the table is created so the first type of constraint is a not null constraint so by default a column can hold the null values so a null value is not same as no data rather than it represents the unknown data so if you do not want the column to have the null values then you can define such constraint on this column which specifies that null is not allowed for that column so this constraint is nothing but a not null constraint so here is one example that i have given in which we are creating the table named employees and we are applying the not null constraint to the id name and age column so that whenever we insert the data into this particular columns we cannot insert the null values as we have applied the not null constraint while creating the table but let's say if we already created the employees table we can use the alter table command to modify the column and apply the not null constraint so here we have used the alter table command in which we have modified the salary columns and applied the not null constraint let us discuss this with some simple example so for this example let us create the customer table which has the id name age and salary as a columns and we will apply the not null constraint to the id and name column so in the first example we will use the create statement to create the table so just give create table table name which will be customers and give the columns one by one so here the first column is id which has int data type and we will pass the not null constraint so we have to give the not null after specifying the column name and the data type of that column so just give like not null next one is name where care 20 not null so we have applied the not null constraint to id and name column and we will specify the remaining columns which are age address salary 
so as you can see our table has been successfully created so when whenever you we use the describe command so just use desc and the table name which is customers so as you can see here in the metadata of the table you can clearly see that null values are not allowed into the id and name column as you can see so we can use the describe command to see the metadata of a table but in this example we have already created the table customers but let's say if you want to give the not null constraint to the age column we can do that by using the alter command so to do that just just give like alter table command so alter table table name which is customers and after that we have to modify the table so we will give like modify the column name which is age give the data type which is int and give like not null that's it just end the statement and hit enter as you can see we have successfully modified our table and given the not null constraint to our age column so that the id name and age column will not receive the null values whenever we try to insert the null values into the id name or age column so insert into customers values and instead of giving the name we will pass the null value in it so when we hit enter as you can see the column name cannot be null it is throwing an error as we have given the not null constraint to the name column so this is how we can use the constraint to restrict the specific type of data into our table so that to maintain the accuracy and discipline of the data the next constraint is default constraint so the default constraint will provide a default value to the column when we didn't provide any specific value while we are inserting the data into our table so it is pretty straightforward so for this example i have created the employees table which has the id name age address and salary column and here we have used the default constraint on the salary column and we have given the value as 5000 so whenever we insert the data into this employees table and if we didn't give the value for salary so it will automatically give the 5000 value to the salary for that specific record as we have given the default constraint here we can also use the default constraint by using the alter table if that table is already created and we just want to modify that we have already discussed this in our previous type which is not null constraint so let us discuss this with some simple example so for this example we will again create customers table so i have already dropped that table so just give like create table customers the first column is id which has the not null constraint that we have discussed in the previous topic the next one is a name which also has the not null constraint next one is the age then address and for the salary column we will give the default constraint so whenever we didn't pass any value to the salary column it will use the default value that we have passed here so for that just use default and give some specified value to store in it so we will give like 10000 so whenever we didn't insert any values in the salary column it will take 10000 as a default value so just complete the statement and we have successfully created our table so when we insert the data into our customers table but in this case we will not insert any data into our salary column so for that just use insert into table name which is customers then we will give the column names id name age and address then values 22 so as you can see in this insert command we didn't passed any value for the salary columns so when you hit enter as you can see it has successfully inserted the data into our customers tables but in this case we haven't passed the value for salary so when we select the data by using the select statement so select star from customers as you can see it is taking as 10000 as a default value as we have used the default constraint into our table so whenever we didn't pass any value it will take it 10000 as a default salary for that specific row in the table this is how we can use the the default constraint the next constraint is a unique constraint so the unique constraint will prevent the two records from having the identical values in the column so let's say for this employees table we have used the unique constraint on the age column so if you don't want to duplicate the age values into your table 
then we can use the unique constraint for the age column we can also use it on the id column to prevent the duplicate id values into our table so the syntax is pretty simple just we have to give the unique after the definition of our column in the create table statement and we can also modify it by using the alter command if the table is already created and you want to modify some specific column to add the constraint so the alter table command i think you're already familiar with so let's create one table and use the unique constraint on the specific column so for this example let us create the students table which has the columns such as id name address and class and we will apply the unique constraint to the id column so for that just use the create table table name will be students the first is id which has the unique constraint so just give like unique the next one is the name which has the varchar data type and will have the not null constraint to prevent the null values in the name column the next one will be address which has the varchar data type the next one will be and will also have the not null constraint to prevent the null value and the last one is class which has the integer data type and that's it so when we hit enter our table has been successfully created so when we try to insert the duplicate values into our id column it will throw an error let me show you with some simple example so we will insert the data so insert into students which has the values for 101 name which is john address uk and class will be 10 so we have created one record which has the 101 id so when we try to insert the duplicate values into the id column so just again insert the values into students and the values will be 101 adam us and 8 so in the second record all the values are different except the id column which also has the 101 value so when we try to insert this record it is showing the error like duplicate entry for key id such as we have used the unique constraint to prevent the duplicate values into our table it will be very beneficial if you have the unique identity for your employees in the organization so it will not allow to enter the duplicate employee id into your employees table now let us discuss about primary key constraint so a primary key is nothing but a field in a table which uniquely identifies each row in a database so the primary keys must contain the unique values and the primary key column cannot have null values so it is just like a combination of unique constraint as well as a not null constraint so a table can have only one primary key which may consist of a single or multiple fields so when the multiple fields are used as a primary key then it is called as a composite key so if a table has a primary key defined on any field then you cannot have two records having the same values of that field so this should be unique so we will be using this concept while creating the database tables so for creating the primary key here i have given the syntax so in the create table statement we can directly provide the primary key after the column definition so as you can see in this example if you want to create a primary key for id column we can do that by giving like id the data type will be int not null and after that we can give like primary key otherwise we can give it at the last of the table definition so here after all the columns are given we can give like primary key and in bracket we can provide the columns on which you want to establish a primary key constraint and if the table is already created then we can use the alter table command to add the primary key for the required field so for defining the primary key constraint on a multiple column we can just give the multiple columns inside this bracket so here we have given the primary key for id as well as we can give for name by specifying the column name in this bracket so let us discuss this with some simple example so for creating a primary key in the create table statement we can give like create table and the table name in this case we will give like customers and in bracket we can specify the column names so first one is id int and we can give the constraint like not null the second will be name where care also we will provide the not null constraint address again where care and the phone number integer and we will give like unique constraint and after that 
we will provide our primary key constraint for the id column so just give like primary key and the column name inside the bracket and for multiple column we can give it as name or we can also give like address so just close the bracket and here you can see we have created the table which has primary key for id column so let me show you the description or a metadata of this table so just use like dsc customers so as you can see here in this result table you can see we have provided the primary key so here you can see primary key for the id column so that every record which has been inserted into this customers table will be uniquely identified as we have provided the primary key and also we have provided the unique key for the phone number to avoid the duplication in this phone column so this is how you can create a primary key constraint for your table but now let us discuss about how we can delete that primary key constraint so for deleting that we have to use the alter table command so we will give like alter table the table name will be customers and we will give like drop primary key and just hit enter as you can see now the primary key constraint has been removed from our table so again we will use the describe command to show the metadata and as you can see there is no primary key present for the id column here so this is how you can add and remove the primary key constraint from your table the next constraint type is foreign key so a foreign key is a key used for linking two tables together so this is sometimes also called as a referencing key so this foreign key is a column or the combination of columns whose values match a primary key in the different table so the relationship between these two tables matches the primary key in one table with the foreign key in the second table so if a table has a primary key defined on any field then we cannot have two records have the same value of that field so here in this example i have given the customer table and orders table in the customers table the id column has a primary key so it uniquely identifies the records and in the orders table the customer id is present which references the id column from the customer table so this customer id will be the foreign key for the orders table which will reference the id column from the customers table so this is the syntax for assigning the foreign key into our database tables just we have to give the reference for the primary key from the first table let us discuss this with some simple example so for this example we have created the customers tables having the id as a primary key so now we will create one table called orders which will have the customer id column that has the reference from the primary key from the customers table so for that we just have to use the create command so just give create table orders the first one will be order id which has the integer not null the next one will be the date and the data type will be date time and now we have the customers id column which will be the reference from the id column from the customers table so we have to give like customer id give the data type and give like references as it is a referencing primary key column from our first table which is customers so just references now we have to give the table name which is customers and in bracket give the primary key column which is id and just give the remaining columns amount as int so we have successfully created our orders table so this is how you can create a foreign key which will reference the primary key from the parent table our last constraint type is check constraint so the check constraint will enable us a condition to check the values being inserted into a record so if the condition evaluates to be false then the record will violate this constraint and will throw an error and the record will not be inserted into our database table so for this example we have created the employees table in which we have used the check constraint for the age column so we have given like check and in bracket we have given the condition which should be satisfied so that the record should be inserted into our table so we have given the condition like the age should be greater than or equal to 18 so if we insert the record in which the age is greater than or equal to 18 then this record will satisfy the condition that we have given in the check constraint and the record will be inserted but if the condition will not satisfied then 
constraint will be violated and it will throw an error. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So for this example, we will create the table named students specifically for the 10th grade student. So in which we will apply the check constraint on the grade column. So for that, just use the create statement. So just create table. Table name will be students. The first is ID, which has int and not null constraint. The second will be the name where care not null constraint. Third one will be address also has the where care. And for the last column, which is grade, we will apply the check condition here. We will give like check and in bracket, we will pass the condition. So our condition will be grade should be equal to 10. So if this condition will satisfied, then and only then the record will be inserted into our table. Otherwise it will violate this constraint and throw an error. So let us close the bracket. As you can see, our table has been successfully created. So this is how we can use the check constraint for applying some specific condition for any column in our database table. Now we will talk about one of the most important topics in SQL, which is joins. So the SQL joins clause is used for combining records from two or more tables present in our database. Join is a means for combining fields from two tables by using the common values in those tables. So here I have given the syntax. So we are joining the employees and salary table in which the ID column is common in both the tables. So we are selecting the ID name, age and salary from the employees and we are joining it to the salary on the basis of the ID column. Let me show you with some simple example. So here I have these tables present in my test database. So in which we are joining two tables, which is employee and employee details. So first let me show you its metadata. For it, just use the DSC command, which is a describe employee and DSC employee details. So as you can see, this is the metadata for both the tables in which we will be joining this table on the basis of the employee ID column as it is common field in both the tables. So in this example, we will be fetching the employee ID, employee name, department from the employee table and the country and email from the employee detail table. So for this, just give like select. And after that, you have to provide the table name dot column. So here you have to give the table name from which you are fetching that column. So here from the employee table, we will be fetching the employee ID, employee name and department. So just give like employee dot ID, employee dot employee name, which is emp name and employee dot department as well as we are going to fetch the country and email ID from the employee detail column. So just give like employee detail dot country comma employee detail dot email from table name which will be employee and just give like join employee details and now we have to give column name which is common in both the tables. So here the employee ID is common in both the tables. So just give on and give the condition. So our condition will be employee dot emp id will be equal to employee detail dot emp id. So just hit enter. So as you can see, we are joining the two tables on the basis of the employee id and we are fetching employee id, employee name, department from the employees table and the country and email id from the employee detail table. But this is a very lengthy syntax and if you want to simplify it, we have to study about aliases that we will cover in the upcoming topics so that the syntax will be easy to understand and it will save your efforts from writing these big queries. But I hope you got clear idea about how the join is working here. Now let's talk about different types of joins in SQL. So here are the major five types of joins in SQL. The first one is inner join which fetches rows when there is a match in both the tables. So if let's consider if your employee table contains 10 records, but the employee detail contains only five records, then it will only fetches the matching records present in both the tables. So here it will give you the results which is available in both the employee table and the employee details table. Let us take an example for your better understanding. So for this example, let me show you the data present in both the tables. So for this, just use select tar form employee and 
select star from employee details. So here you can see our employee table contains eight records and the employee detail contains seven records in which only six records are matching which is one, two, three, four, five, six, which is present in both the tables. But here, as you can see, this seven and 10 record is not present in the employee details table. And this nine record is not present in the employee table. So if we use inner join on this, it will only fetches the matching records, which are the top six records from both the tables. So for this example, we will be fetching the employee ID and department from the employee table and the mobile number from the employee details table so for it just give like select employee dot ID again employee dot department and we are going to fetch the mobile number from the employee detail table employee details dot mobile again use from the employees employee and instead of giving join we are going to specify the inner join here for fetching only the matching records from both the tables so give like inner join employee details on employee dot ID equal to employee details dot ID which is common in both the tables as we have discussed earlier so when we hit enter as you can see it is only getting the six records which are common and present in both the tables so we are fetching employee ID department from the employee table and the mobile from employee details table it is very simple and easy to understand. So now let's talk about the left join and the right join. So when we use the left outer join or a left join, it will fetch all the rows from the left table, even if there are no matches in the right table. So let's consider if our employee tables has the 10 records and employee details table only has five records, but it will fetch all the records from the left table and it will have null values for the remaining records in the right table. Let us discuss this with some simple example. So for this example, as you already know, our employee table has eight records and in our right table, which is employee details table, only seven records are present from which only six records are matching, which we have discussed in the previous topic. But if we use the left outer join, so this is our left table, which is employee table, so it will fetches all the records from the left table. So as you can see, it has the eight records. So it will fetches eight records, even if there are no matches in the right. So as you can see, the employee ID seven and 10 records only present in the left table and no matches in the right table, which is employee details table. So it will fetch all the data from the left table. So for this example, we will fetching the employee ID and employee name from the employee table and the city from the right table which is employee details table so similarly you have to give like select employee dot emp id and employee dot emp name which is employee name and from the right table which is employee details table we will be only fetching city from the left table which is employee table and we will use the left outer join here so you either you can give like left outer join or else you can just give like left join so just use left join and the right table is employee details on employee dot ID equal to employee details dot ID. So this is very simple. So if we hit enter, as you can see, it is fetching eight records as expected. But here you can see they are showing null values from the right table, which is city as these two records are not present in the employee details table as we are fetching the city column from the employees table there is no value for this seven and eight employee id in this right table so instead of giving any value it is showing as nulls so i hope you got clear idea how the left outer join is working now let's talk about the right join which is exactly opposite of the left join so it will fetch all the rows from the right table even if there are no matches found in the left table. So as you know, our employee details table, which is a right table has seven records and the left table, which is employee table has eight records, but from which only six records are matching in both the tables. But if you use right join, it will fetch all the seven records from the right table, which is employee details. Even if there are no matches for those seventh record in the left table which is employee table so we'll use a similar example to get a clear idea 
what we are talking about here. So here you can see we are using the similar example in which we are fetching employee id and employee name from the employee table and the city from employee details table but instead of left join we are using right join here as you can see so when we execute this let's hit enter as you can see now it is printing all the records from the right table which is employee details table which has seven records but from which only six records are matching. So as you can see, this last record is only present in the right table, but there are no values present for this record in the left table. So as you can see, it is showing null as similar to the previous example in which we have talked about how the left join works. So I hope you got the clear idea. What is the meaning of both joins and how they are working? And our last join condition is full join. So the SQL full join combines the result of both left and right outer joins. So it will return all the rows present in both the tables. But whenever the value is not present in either of the table, it will show it as a null value. So it is a combination of a right outer join and the left outer join. So the join table will contain all the records from both the tables and fill in the nulls for missing matches on either side. It's that simple. So this is the basic syntax of full join, which is, you know, similar to all other joins that we have seen earlier. Just you have to mention the full join after the left table. But unfortunately, as I'm using the MySQL, the full join will not work for me. So you have to practice on your own as the MySQL doesn't support the full join at all. So as you can see, it's throwing me an error because it's not a surprise. It doesn't work at all for MySQL. So if you're using a Oracle 11G or a Microsoft SQL Server, this join will definitely work for you. But if not, or you're facing any difficulties, just leave the comment below and I will check on it. So now we will see the union clause in SQL. So the SQL union clause is used for combining the results of two or more select statements without fetching any duplicate rows. So it will only retrieve the unique values from both the tables. But to use this union clause, each select statement should satisfy the following conditions that I have given here. The first one is it should have the same number of columns, which we are using in the select clause, as well as it has the same number of column expressions. Also, it should have the same data types and they should be in the same order. So these are some conditions which needs to be satisfied for using the union clause. So this is the syntax that I have given here. So here are the two select statement which are fetching the data from table one and table two. And we are just joining them by using the union keyword. Let's talk about this with some simple example. So for this example, we have one table named employee that we have seen in the previous examples. So let me show you the data select star from employee. So this is the table contains employee ID, employee name, designation, department and joining date. So let's create one table which is similar to the employee table which contains same columns. So we can do that by simply using the create statement. So just give like create table, the new table name. So we will create employee two as we will select all the columns from the employee table. So just give like select star from employee. So what we will do is it will simply create a replica of an employee table and it also has the same number of records into our newly created table. So as you can see, eight rows are affected as all the rows are inserted into our employee two table. So when we apply select on our employee two table, as you can see, it is the same table as the employee table. But there is no point of using union on those tables because it doesn't have any unique records. So all the records are completely the same. So let's insert some unique records in both these tables. So here, as you can see, I have inserted four unique records in both these tables. So two in employee and two in employee two table. So let's apply the union clause to join these two tables. So for this example, we will be retrieving employee ID, employee name and the department from both these tables and we will join it by using the union clause. So for that, just use select emp id, emp name and department from the employee table and we will use the union keyword here. So just give union and our next select statement. So select, so the column names are also similar. So emp id, emp name and department from the employee two table. 
So all we're doing here is selecting three columns from each table, but they're having the similar column expression. The number of columns in both the select statements are similar as well as they have the same data types as the metadata of both these tables is similar. So when we hit enter, so as you can see, it is fetching only unique records in both these tables. So here, as you can see, there are no duplicates present in these tables because we have total of 20 records in both these tables, but we are only getting 12. So it clearly means that it is filtering out the duplicate records. So what if we want all these records, even if they are duplicate? So for that, we will use the union all clause that we will see now. So now let's talk about the union all clause. So the union all operator is used for combining the result of two select statement, including the duplicate records. So unlike the union clause, the union all clause will also retrieve the duplicate rows. So as you already aware that both our tables contains 10 number of records. So it will fetch all the 20 records, even if they're duplicate. So this is the syntax for union all clause. It is exactly the same as the union clause. But all you have to do is instead of using union as a keyword, you have to use union all to join your two select statements. Let me show you with a similar example. So in this example, we will fetch the employee ID, employee name and department from employee and employee two tables from employee table and the similar columns from employee two table. All we are changing here is the union all. So instead of union, we'll, we will be using the union all. So when we execute this query, as you can see, this is our result table and it is fetching the 20 rows. So it is fetching all the records from both these tables. So here you can see the employee ID one to seven is getting duplicated because both the tables contains similar records. So when you want to retrieve all the records present in both the tables, then you will use the union all instead of union clause. So this is the major difference between both these union statements. So I hope you got the clear idea about the union clause and how you can use it to join two select statements. Now we will talk about the null values. So the null values in SQL is the term which is used for representing a missing value. So a null value in a table is a value in a field that appears to be the blank. So a field with null values is a field with no value. So it is very important to understand that a null value is different from either a zero or some blank spaces into the field. So earlier while creating a table, we have used the not null constraint to restrict the null values while inserting the data into our table. So the not null will signify that the column should always accept an explicit value of a given data type. So the columns where we have did not use the not null, which means that these columns could contain the null value. So a field with null value is the one that has been left blank during the record creation. So you might ask how to handle these null values. So the null values can cause problems when selecting the data. However, because when comparing an unknown value to any other value, the result is always unknown and not included in the result. So you must use the is null or the is not null operator to check for null values. So here I have given the syntax for it. So here we are selecting the ID, name, age, address, salary from the customers table where the salary is not null. So it will fetch the records where the values of salary will not contain the null values. The syntax for is null constraint is similar to that. Just we have to use the is null keyword instead of is not null. Let me show you with some simple example. So here for this example, we will be using the customer table. Let me show you its metadata. So for this, just use the describe command customers. So as you can see, it contains the field name, ID, name, address, and phone. But we have defined a not null constraint for ID and name column, as you can see in this result here. So when we insert the data, it will not accept the null values. Let me validate this. So we will use the insert command. So insert into our table name is customers values. So for ID, let's take one and for name, instead of using any value, we will simply give null and for address, we will give like India and just give the phone number. So when we try to insert this record, as you can see, the column name cannot be null as we have defined the not null constraint while creating the table. 
But let's consider if we try to insert null values in the phone column, the value will be inserted as you can see because we did not define any not null constraint for the phone column. So this is how you can restrict the null values into your table. Now we will see how to use the is null and is not null operator to restrict the null values into your result table. So this is very important operators for using while selecting the records from your table which contains so many null values. So let's take an example for a customer's table. So let me show you the data present in it. So as you can see it has 9 records from which the 4 records contains null values in the phone column. So these records we have just created in the previous example. So if let's consider if you want to get the records which contains the null values in the phone column you have to specify the is null operator into the where clause. Let me show you how. So for this example we will retrieve the id, name and address columns from the customers table and we will use the is null operator in the where clause. So give where the phone column is null. So when we execute this command as you can see we are only getting the records who has the null values in its phone column. So instead of printing all the 8 records it is just printing the last 4 which contains null value as a phone number. So we can use it vice versa for the is not null operator. So is not null will only print the records which doesn't contain any null values. So for this example we will be selecting all the columns from the customers table where the phone is not null. So what we are doing here is we will select all the columns from customers tables and we will only select those records who don't have null values in the phone column. So when you execute this command as you can see we are getting only first 4 records who doesn't have any null values in the, into the phone column. So this is how you can use the is null and is not null operator for retrieving the data when you have null values into either of the columns. So now we will talk about the alias syntax in SQL. So the alias syntax is a very useful tool if you are dealing with complex SQL statements. So we can rename a table or column temporarily by giving a name which is also known as alias. So there are mainly two types of alias present in SQL. The first one is a table alias and second one is a column alias. So the use of table alias is to rename a table in a specific SQL statement and the renaming is a temporary change and the actual table name will not be impacted by using the alias. And on the other hand the column alias I use for renaming tables columns for a particular SQL query. So here I have given the syntax for table alias and column alias. So for the table alias all you have to do is after the table name you have to give as and the alias name that you need to use for the particular table name. And on the other hand the column alias is used as similar to the table alias. So instead of column name you have to specify a specific alias name to your column. But it will not impact the table name in the database or a column name in any table. So let's discuss this with some simple example. So first we will see how the table alias will work. So for this example we will perform a join condition on these two tables. The first one is the employee and the second one is a employee details. So we will join these two tables in which we will fetch the employee id which is m id and employee name from the employee table and email from the employee details table. So for this example you have to specify like select and as you already aware that you have to specify the table name dot column name in the join condition. So instead of giving the table name we will give it a alias. So for employee table we will use the alias as e dot and we are fetching the employee id and e dot employee name and for another table which is employee details table we will use the alias as d. So d dot country and d dot email. But wait a minute we didn't specify it the table alias as yet. So to specify it we will specify it in the from clause. So from employee table and we will use it as keyword. So employee as the alias that we have given is e and we will use the inner join here. So inner join the next table which is employee details. So employee details as d. So this is so simple. So when we execute this so as you can see we are getting the results 
into your result table. So now we will talk about the column alias. So for this example, we will be using the employee table. So in the employee table, we can use the column alias to change the column names in the result table. So let's consider this column name have the emp ID as employee ID, emp name as employee name, as well as it has the designation, department and joining date. But among this, this emp ID and emp name are only the short forms. So if you want, if you want to display this emp ID as a employee ID, and similarly for the employee name, if you want to display it as an employee name, you can do that by using the column alias. So for this, just we'll use like select and we're fetching the employee ID from the employee table. So emp ID and here you have to specify the alias. So here you have to use the as and the name that you want to display in the result table. So just give like employee underscore ID. So this is how you have to specify the column alias. Then you will use comma, then emp name as employee name. So this is how you can specify the column alias. And we are fetching this data from the employee table. So this is so simple. So when you hit enter, as you can see, in the result table, the emp ID is replaced by the employee ID and the emp name is replaced by the employee name but the table structure will not be affected when we use the describe command to see the metadata of this table as you can see here in the table structure that column names are still the emp id and emp name so the column alias will only change the column names in the result table only so i hope you got the clear idea what are the alias the two major types of alias which is column alias and table alias and how it will make the query more readable and easy to type. Okay, so now let's talk about the alter command in SQL. So this alter command is used for adding, deleting or modifying the columns in an existing tables. So you should also use the alter command to add or drop the various constraint on an existing table. So here is the syntax that I have given for adding the column as well as for dropping the column. And the third or fourth one are for modifying the columns. So let's discuss this with some simple example. So let's talk about the alter command which will help us to add a newer column to our existing table. So for this example, we're using the employee table for adding the column. So let me show you the metadata of the table. So just use the describe command. So as you can see, it has the five columns, namely employee ID, employee name, designation, department, and the joining date, which has the data types as you can see here. And it also has the constraint and the primary keys which are given in this result table. So in this example, we will add one column named salary. So to do that, just you have to give like alter table and give the table name. So here the table name is employee and you have to give add keyword for adding the column. So just give like add and the column name that you need to add in this table. So just give like salary and also you need to provide the data type for this column. So the data type we will give is integer having the length 20. So that's it. As you can see, the 10 rows are affected as there are 10 records present in this table. So when we again use the describe command, as you can see, the salary column has been added to our table having the integer with the length 20. So this is how you can add the column in your existing table. But now we will discuss how to modify the data type of this salary column. So to do that, again, we will use the alter command. So alter table, the table name, which is employee. And we have to use the modify keyword now as we need to modify the data type of the column. So just give like modify column. And after that, just give the column name, which is salary and the new data type that you need to assign to the salary column. So we will give like where care 20. So when you hit enter, as you can see, the data type has been changed for this table. So when we again use the describe, as you can see, the data type has been changed to varchar 20. So this is how you can add or modify the column into your existing table. And at the last, we will see how to drop a column. So we have added the salary column. So if you need to drop it, you just simply use the alter command again. So just use alter table, the table name, which is employee, then use the drop keyword here. So just use drop column and the column name, which is salary so that's it so when we hit the describe command again as you can see 
that salary column has been dropped from our employee table. So this is how you can use the alter command for adding, modifying and dropping the columns in the existing table. Our next topic is truncate table command. So the truncate table command is used for deleting the complete data from our existing table in a database. So we can just simply use the drop command to delete the complete table, but it would also remove the complete table structure from the database. And you would need to recreate this table once again if you wish to store some data in future. So basically the truncate will only remove the records, but the stru structure will still remain in a database. So you don't have to recreate the table again and again whenever you need it in future. So the syntax is pretty straightforward. Just you have to type truncate table and give the table name. Is that simple? So let's see it with some simple example. So in the previous examples, we have already created a table named employee 2, which is an exact replica of our employee table. So let me show you the data present in it. Select R from employee 2. So currently there are 10 records present in this table. So let's consider if you want to delete all these records from the table, you don't have to use the drop command, else you can use the truncate command and you can use this table whenever you required in future. So to do that, just you have to type truncate table and give the table name. So it is very simple procedure. Employee 2, when you hit enter, as you can see, now these 10 records are deleted from the employee 2 table. So when we again select the data, as you can see, it is showing as empty set. So all the records are deleted, but the table structure is still there. To see that, you just have to use the TSC command, which is nothing but describe command employee. So as you can see, the metadata for this table is still present, just it doesn't have any data. So this is the use of a truncate table command. So whenever interviewer asks you a question to tell the difference between truncate command and a drop command, so you just have to mention this point. So the only difference is drop table will drop the records as well as the whole table structure, but the truncate table will only delete the records and the table structure will still remain. So our next point and one of the most important points in SQL, which is views. So what do you mean by a view? So the view is nothing more than just a SQL query, which is stored in a database with some associated name. So it is actually just a composition of table in the form of a predefined SQL statement. So this view can contain all rows of table or you can select the specific rows from a table, a view can be created from one or many table which depends upon the written SQL query to create a view. So the view will be useful for three major things. The first one is it will structure the data in a way that users or classes of users find natural or intuitive, which is the whole purpose of using the views in SQL. The next one is it will restrict the access to the data in such a way that a user can see and modify exactly what they need and no more. So it is used as a security purpose for restricting the data for specific users or a group of people. And the last one is it will summarize the data from various tables which can be used for generating the reports. So this way you don't have to create another table or write a whole SQL query. You just create a view by passing the SQL statement and it will be stored in a database and fetch the data as per your requirement. So let's talk about how to create a view. So the database views are created using the create view statement that I have given here. So it can be created from a single table, multiple table or some another view. So the basic syntax that I have given here. So just give create view, the view name as and the SQL statement. Let's discuss this with some simple example. So for this example, we have one table employee. So let me show you the data present in that table. So we will select all the data. So this is our table. But let's say if we want to create a view on top of this employee table and if we want to fetch the employee ID, employee name and the department from the employee table where the employee ID should be less than 10. So this 11 and 17. So this last record should not be present in our view. So for that you have to use the create view statement. So for that you just have to type create view and you have to pass the view name, but it should be different from the tables or views already present in your database. 
so we will say like employee underscore view as and you have to pass the select statement so just give like select emp id employee name which is emp name and the department from the employee table where the emp id is less than 10 so that's it we will end our statement and as you can see the query has been succeeded so let's select the data present in our employee view so select star from employee underscore view so as you can see the view has been created in a database which will fetch the employee id employee name department from the employee table in which the employee id should be less than 10 so it is only retrieving the data whose employee id is less than 10 so that's it you can also use the column alias to further improve the readability of your result table so this is how you can create a view on top of a table or a different view present in your database our next topic is how to update a view so a view can be updated under these conditions that i have given here so these are all the conditions so the first one is the select clause shouldn't contain the distinct keyword summary function set function set operators and the order by clause as well as the from clause shouldn't contain the multiple tables and the where clause should not contain the sub queries also the query should not contain the group by or having clause and all the not null columns from base table must be included in a view in order for inserting the query to a function so these are some specific conditions that you need to follow if you want to update a view so for this example let's say if you want to change the employee name of the employee whose employee id is 7 you can do that by using the update statement so just give like update the view name which is employee view and now we will use like set we have to change the name of employee so just give like emp name equal to we will give the updated name which is john where the employee id equals to 7 so that's it the one row is affected so when we retrieve the data as you can see the employee name whose employee id 7 has been changed to john but wait a minute we have created this view on top of the employee table so what about the employee table does the data change in the base table or not what do you think i think you guess it correctly the data present in the employee table also change so when we retrieve the data from the employee table as you can see the employee name of the employee whose employee id is 7 has been changed to john so whenever you're doing any updation in the view you have to remember that that view is only a sql statement built on top of the base table so the base table also changes the value permanently so our next topics are how to insert or delete a rows in a view so a rows can be inserted or deleted from the view and the same rules will be applied that we have discussed earlier in case of update command so the syntaxes will be also same that we have discussed earlier while we insert the rows in a table and also we have seen how to delete a rows in a table so the same syntax will be applied in case of views as well so this will be your exercise in which you have to create a view and you have to update insert or delete some rows from that view and if you face any difficulty just let me know in the comment and i will try to resolve it as soon as possible and our last topic is dropping the views so it is very simple syntax so if you want to delete the view from your database you just have to use the drop statement here so the syntax is pretty simple you just have to type drop view and pass the view name that's it the view will be deleted from your database i don't think you need some examples to discuss these topics as you already aware of how to insert delete and drop an entire table in sql our next topic is having clause so the having clause will enable us for specifying some conditions that will filter which group results appear in the result so it clearly means the having clause is used after the group by clause but it is very different than the where clause so the where clause places condition on the selected columns whereas the having clause places the condition on the groups which are created by the group by clauses so as you already aware the group by clause is used for grouping the similar kind of data and if we use the having clause on top of group by it will just used for placing some conditions 
on those groups created by the group by clause. So the syntax that I have given here. So we are selecting some columns from tables. After that, we have given the where, where clause and the group by clause. So we are grouping on basis of column one and two, and we will give some having clause to apply some conditions on this grouping. So let's discuss this with some simple example. So for this example, we will be using the employee table. So here you can see the employee table having the employee ID, name, designation, department and joining date. So for this example, we will be using the having clause to apply some condition on our group by clause. So first, if we need to fetch the number of employees present in each department, we can do that by using the group by clause. So for this, we will just use select and for counting the employees, we will use the count function. So just count employee name and the department from the employee table group by and we will be grouping it on the basis of department column. So when we hit enter, as you can see, we're getting the number of employees present in each department. So the accounts has four, IT has four and the lab has two. But let's say if you want to apply some condition on the group by clause, we can do that by using the having clause. So in this example, we will be selecting the number of employees in each department in which the count of employee name is greater than two. So which means it should only face this first two records. Let's see with this example. So we will apply the similar select, select count of employee name, department from employee, group by department. And on the next line, we will use like having count of employee name should be greater than two. So as you can see, we are only getting the first two result in which we are getting the number of employees present in each departments having the number of employees greater than two. So it is only fetching these first two departments, which are nothing but accounts and IT having the four number of employees. So this is how you can use the having clause for applying some condition on your group by clause. So I hope you understood what is having clause and why it is different than the where clause. And now we will see some advanced topic in SQL, which is sub queries. So it is a bit advanced topic and you might have some difficulty when you practice it first time. But when you practice it on the regular basis, it will be easy for you to understand and apply the complex sub queries in your examples. So a sub query, which is also known as inner query or a nested query is nothing but a query with another SQL query, which is embedded within the where clause. So this sub query is used for returning the data, which will be used in the main query as a condition to further restrict the data to be retrieved. So it is bit of a complex syntax. So the sub queries can be used in the select clause as well as insert, update and delete statement along with the operators that I have given here. But there are some few rules that you need to remember if you're using sub queries into your SQL statements. So the first one, and it is very important. So the sub queries must be enclosed within the parenthesis. So when you're using the sub query in your where clause, you should give the parenthesis to pass your sub query inside it. Next one is a sub query can have only one column in the select clause, unless the multiple columns are in the main query for the sub query to compare its selected columns as well as an order by command cannot be used in the sub query. Although the main query can have the order by clause, but you cannot use it in, a, in your sub query command and the group by command can also be used to perform the same function as the order by in the query. The next one is sub queries that return more than one row can only be used with the multiple value operators such as in operator. So in, in you're passing the multiple values at the same time. And the last one is the sub query cannot be immediately enclosed in a function. So these are some rule you have to remember if you're using sub queries into the SQL statement. So this is the syntax that I have given here. So as you can see, we are using the sub query into the where condition to further restrict down your data. So let us discuss this with some simple examples. So for this example, we will be using the EMP, which is employee table in your database. So for this example, we will be selecting employee number, employee name, the job and the department number from the employee table, which is EMP. And we will use the sub query in our where clause. So where, so in this example, we will be using the where clause on the employee number column. 
So what we are going to do here that we are going to fetch the records for all the employees whose salary is greater than 2000. So here we will use the employee number but we want to fetch the employee numbers whose salary is greater than 2000. All you have to do is just select the employee number from the EMP table and we will pass the where condition here. So where the salary is greater than 2000. So this is very simple example to help you understand how this nested query is working. But you can directly use the where clause in which you can select the salary greater than 2000. But I am using the employee number in the where clause to help you understand how this sub query is working. So what it is doing is so this result of this inner query will be passed to the where condition of the main query. So what is the result of this query? So it is just selecting the employee numbers from the employee table where the salary is greater than 2000. So it will fetch all the employee numbers whose salary is greater than 2000 which will again then passed in the where condition. So all you have to do is you have to use the in operator here. So what it will do is it will fetch the records having the salary greater than 2000. So the result from this will go to the where clause where it will fetch the employee numbers of the employees whose salary is greater than 2000. So when we hit enter as you can see we are getting the results for employee number, employee name, job and department number whose salary is greater than 2000. So this is how you can use the sub queries to further restrict down your data. Similarly, you can use the sub queries or the inner queries with the insert, update as well as the delete statement. All you have to do is you have to remember the few rules that we have discussed earlier. If you don't remember it, just replay it and write down in your notes. Because to understand sub queries properly, you need to practice more and you have to do some experiments so that it will be easy to understand.